It is now time for Python on Hardware News. Blinka, blinka, blinka. So, uh, some significant news in my opinion, mm -hmm. uh, as someone who works on this newsletter and watching this thing called CircuitPython, um, Serpente is now a success story. Um, the title of our newsletter this week was CircuitPython Empowering Makers to Make Businesses. So this is a Serpente, it's from Arturo. Um, you can see it's 15 bucks uh, a pop. Uh, we sell them on Adafruit. That's right. And they're also on Tindy.com. They have uh, pretty much universal five-star reviews. Arturo was able to make hardware and not have to worry about the software as much because Arturo used CircuitPython. So CircuitPython, much like Python, is one of those batteries included every time there's an update. She get gets it. an update. And one of the things, because uh, I wrote this up as one thing, uh, as far as like a little mini case study, as they say in the biz world, um, Arturo sold 400 of these. That's Couldn't a lot. have done it without the awesome power of CircuitPython. And um, it is something that we see taking off. Um, for open source hardware makers, or pretty much anyone, um, Sony today, uh, they, uh, their, their board, the uh, Spresens, Spresens, yeah. um, they get all the new features of CircuitPython every time there's an update. So they just send their customers over to circuitpython.org slash downloads. There's a picture of the board. And it's literally just as, just as easy as dragging and dropping a file. And now you've got the latest version of CircuitPython. Yeah, so, and we're adding more and more. We just added Microlab. It's going to be coming out in a new release. We're working on adding RG matrices. There's a lot of stuff that you don't have to worry about if your board is ported to CircuitPython and is part of our, our build platform. Yeah. We have like 100 plus boards that are already in there. Yeah. It's very and so easy. I, I expect this is going to be very similar to um, what I saw when I uh, was writing about Arduino. So a million years ago, I wrote an article, Why Arduino? One Why It's Here to Stay. And at the very end, I said, the things that, are, that make an electronics platform successful, that's going to happen no matter what the shape of the board. And this reminds me of that. So what I'm seeing is people that do hardware, they're like, how can I focus on the hardware? How can I keep the cost down? How can I make something that has Bluetooth? How can I make something that has Wi-Fi? How can I make something that has a display? All that stuff just delays your ability to ship hardware unless you can get something that's baked in, open source, and there's a big community behind it, so there's frequent updates. So um, this is the, you know, every news article about the world right now has a chart, and like I don't want to make a chart like this, but it looks like CircuitPython is following that, the number of boards that we have. There's over 116 boards, the number of libraries, there's over 200. Um, it has that same adoption curve that you see for really large electronic platforms. Yeah. So it'll be neat. Speaking of, so while the Open Hardware Summit is gone virtual, there are still things going on with the hardware. So this is a tray. This is from SparkFun. If you look really, 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 really close, you can see Blinka in there. Ooh. So some of the badges have uh, Blinka on it. Here's the tester. And here's a pack that was getting shipped off. Um, let's uh, go to the overhead real quick. We have one. Thank you, Drew. This Yay. arrived today. This is a QR code where you can get the information about the badge. Yeah. And it's a wearable. You can see the size. This would fit well on a Lady Ada wrist or any Ooh. wrist. And uh, this is, I think, one of the first prototypes that were made because eventually there was these. Uh, you can see, you can see the little purple, because, yeah, yeah, little Oshpark uh, so niblets. We'll probably be doing some projects with this and more. It's very similar to the Clue, so probably a lot of the things that you do with Clue will work on this. And then this particular wearable platform badge and all the things it does will always be updated as we update Circuit. Python. So this is a really neat thing that'll last a very, very long time. The Open Hardware Summit physical one will be next year. Um, I ex fully expect people to be hacking on these badges over the next year, so we'll probably see a lot of cool projects. That is the Open Hardware Badge. Yay! There is a new um, extension, Community Made, for uh, Visual Studio Code. This is from Joe. Joe wanted to bring the entire CircuitPython workflow into a single place in VS Code. This was inspired by Scott Hanselman's blog post in the VS uh, code Arduino extension, and it's in the Visual Studio Marketplace right now. Um, the Open Serial Console will prompt you for a serial port to connect to, then it'll display the serial port output from the board attached to the board. So if you like tools like Mew, but you like to use things like Visual Studio Code, this is for you. This looks really nice. I might try this out. I love how there's like, it's not yeah. too much, you know, like some IDEs are just so intense. I like how this is it's very simple. Like the simplicity is important. Next up, uh, Jay made a really fantastic tutorial on how to make a Circuit Python GPS locator. So this is a. These are my favorite. These are single serving devices. People always say, "Oh, you, why, do you get, why don't you get a phone?" Well, a phone's not going to work all the time, and the phone can get turned off. 
you know, in a variety of ways, or you can install an app, where you, now you have the overhead of a phone and you have a monthly service plan, all that stuff. This is a very straightforward, easy to make GPS that displays all sorts of things. 3D printed case, very cool project. Thank you for sharing it, Jay. Um, Biggish news, I think, uh, Microlab, you can crunch numbers fast with CircuitPython. Uh, Jepler worked on this, and uh, it is one of the neatest things I've seen to come to CircuitPython, because now you can do a bunch of number crunching tasks and tests in CircuitPython, and about 10 times as fast. Um, yes, for sensor sensors, data, yeah. for doing like stuff that you want to visualize. I mean, CircuitPython, it's powerful, but it's interpreted. So if you have you know an array of 100 numbers and you want to um, perform an operation on all of them, you would normally have to go through and iterate through that array, which, you know, it, it's, it takes more time in Python. Using ULab, it's like NumPy. It, it's the same thing. It's like you have an array type, and they can perform operations very quickly on all of them. And because it's it's low-level written in C instead of use, doing the interpreter for every step, um, it's very, very fast. You can, you can do a lot of mathematical features. It's not exactly like NumPy, but it's heavily inspired by NumPy. So if you use NumPy, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I know what this does. This is familiar. But obviously, we couldn't fit everything. Next up. We did the IoT Design Week with Microchip, Wizard of Make Bob Martin. So if you want to see this, you can go to Microchip's YouTube channel and see the entire hour-long session. Thank you so much, Microchip for broadcasting this. This was a virtual event planned ahead of time. It was not because something was canceled, by the way. But so so handy. We were ready to go. Yeah, we were ready to do it. Last week, we did Ion MPI, and we did an introduction to the ESP32 S2 and talked a little bit about how we're going to run CircuitPython and Tiny uh, USB on it. Check out that segment. It's also a newsletter in beta, adafruitdaily.com. Um, and we're going to have the newsletter, the blog post, and everything go out about the same time each week. So check that out if you want to get the latest and greatest on where you can get these new chips and more, and of course some of the things that we're doing with CircuitPython. Um, this is kind of cool. Uh, this is a game of life made with CircuitPython. Brandon made this, um, and it's on a screen, and it's staring, uh, starring the one and only Linka. Yeah, look at the tile action. So this is using um, the built-in tile capabilities of Display I/O. You can't tell. This is the Feather M4 Airlift Featherwing plus Ethernet. CircuitPython snakes its way to Cat5. That's right. We got that working this week. Kevin made a video on panelizing circuit boards uh, using KiCad. This one happens to be the Circuit Brain board powered by CircuitPython. This is another business example of using CircuitPython. Uh, this crowd supply is going to be going live, and you'll be able to purchase these boards that Kevin made. And CircuitPython is built right in. Yay! Um, this is from Ben, who makes these really cute Lego minifig looking CircuitPython things. And if you uh, look at the video really close, he was like, oh, CircuitPython 5 came out. Uh, new, new version. Let me see how long it takes. And it was about the same time it took to tweet. That's how fast. This is kind of cool. Uh, Greg got the CircuitPython REPL that Zobs ported over to FOMO, running on the Orange Crab. You'll see more That's of that That's exciting. Later. Liz is working on this very cool step counter based on Clue, CircuitPython. Um, special shout out and thanks to Novel Bits. They do an excellent Bluetooth industry report. Yep. And uh, this is like when, um, when like, a, like a Bluetooth celebrity, uh, you know, Senpa, I noticed us. Yeah, like this is neat. They, they, they are the standard for, I think, the best Bluetooth newsletter. Yeah. Uh, I do subscribe to a bunch. And uh, it was great to see our board in there. So if you haven't already, check out the Novel Bits Bluetooth industry report, especially if you're into this stuff. Um, another thing that uh, was uh, posted, this is... Uh, from Go Jimmy Pie, they published their quest to get CircuitPython on a soft RISC V CPU on the ECP5 FPGA for the Redona ULX3X. Whew, that was That's a fun. lot. I got through it. Anyways, CircuitPython for RISC V. FPGA, <laughs> FPGA running RISC V, and then CircuitPython on top of that. Yeah. Uh, this is a really neat CircuitPython based light up glove, complete with Iron Man Paul ring. Oh, nice. Check that out. Yeah. Fancy. And then. Um, Lady Ada, what do you call a gathering in a, in a group of crickets? Do you know? Um, a herd? I don't know. An orchestra. An orchestra. Yeah, so this is That's an nice. orchestra of crickets and circuit python. Uh, this is kind of cool. Uh, Sam posted up some great x-rays of some boards, including the feather-compatible orange crab. We're sending Sam out a bunch of our boards, and uh, hopefully we'll have some cool x-ray photos of them soon. Moit had posted up a delightful creation. This is a Featherwing prototype using the Bantam Tools Mill. It's a classy way to display seven segments. Toot. This is a feather adapter for the Onion Omega. 
by Tisham, and the files are available on GitHub. This is the Clue running on a Gigglebot, and this is from Clio QC. So all of the microbit accessories that we've been testing out have been working out so far, and a lot of people in the community has been testing them as well. Uh, microbit released uh, kind of good timing, classroom.microbit.org. You can do this virtual or in person and have kids learn about Python or MakeCode all inside uh, their interface. Um, it works really well. We have a guide that we also just published. Katni posted up a new guide. This is for um, putting Badger, our series of programs and more uh, that lets you make name badges and, and anything for any type of event that you want. Posted up a video on doing Morse code between a couple of different clues. What can the clue do? And last up, um, we're working with our teams. We're expecting PyCon to make announcements. Uh, so far, PyCon's still on. It's April 15th to the 23rd. We'll see if that continues to happen. However, we are prepared for anything, including making sure people can tune into anything if it goes virtual. And that is the Python on Hardware News for this week. Blinka, blinka, blinka. All right.